Welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about the Kapustinsky approximation, and then we did a practice problem where we calculated the lattice energy using the Kapustinsky approximation. In the video before that, we used the Born-Land equation to, ca to calculate the lattice energy for rubidium bromide. And we saw that their values were actually relatively similar. All right, so in this video, we're going to calculate the thermodynamic radii if we already know the lattice energy. So sometimes when we have unusual uh, lattices between, say, like calcium and the C22 minus, um, it's not as simple as just adding the, the two radii. Because this is not just one atom. This is actually two carbons. And it'd be, I mean, I'm, I suppose somewhere you could find it, but whenever you have multiple atoms, a polyatomic anion, say, um, it becomes a lot more complicated and error prone. So sometimes what we want to do is actually calculate the thermodynamic radius and then back calculate the radius of C22 minus, okay? And we're going to use, say, the Kapustinsky approximation to do this. All right. All right, with the Kapustinsky equation, we're going to get the quadratic formula, but might as well just do it just to show you what you would do. So we're going to multiply this whole thing out in front times the 1 and then times the negative 0.345 over D. So what we're going to get is U naught is equal to 1202 V Z plus Z minus all divided by D naught. We're going to get the same thing when we multiply it by 1. And then we're going to subtract this from it's going to be 1202 times 0 0.345 times V times Z plus times Z minus all divided by and D naught times D naught is D naught squared. All right. So what we ultimately need to do, we're going to subtract, or excuse me, add or subtract, depending, everything over to this side. Okay, so when we add this term, we're going to get 1202 times 0 0.345 times V times Z plus times Z minus over D naught squared. This is going to be subtracted over, so it's going to be minus 1202 V Z plus Z minus over D naught, and then plus U naught is equal to zero. Now, how do you deal with the quadratic formula when everything's in the denominator? Well, the way we get around that is we're just going to multiply this whole thing. We could do it to the, well, we'll show it on this other side too. We're going to multiply this whole thing times D naught squared. Now, we, I'm going to show it on that side, although it's just going to be zero. When we do that, the D naught squared is going to be multiplied by U naught. So we're going to get U naught times D naught squared. This D naught squared is going to cancel with one of the D naughts here, leaving in the numerator minus 1202 V Z plus Z minus times D naught, okay? And then this D naught squared completely cancels with the, this D naught squared, and so you're left with plus 1202 times 0 0.345 times V times Z plus times Z minus, and that's equal to zero. So now what I'd like to do is figure out what my A is, what my B is, and what my C is, because I'm just going to simply plug it into a quadratic formula calculator. All right, so my A is going to be this value, simply U naught. My B is going to be all of this. And then my C is going to be all of that. So I need to figure out what those are. What is A? Well, if I go back to the problem, we had a lattice energy of negative 2911. So my lattice energy there is going to be negative 2911. That's my A, because all A is is just the lattice energy. My B is going to be negative 1202 times, what is V for this? Well, V is the number of ions per unit formula, right? Number of ions per unit formula, well, this is just CaC2, but be careful, C2 is one ion. Calcium is one, so that's just two. That's a two. The charge, the plus charge, is going to be two. It's going to be two plus or plus two, and the minus charge is going to be minus two. So this is going to be plus two times minus two, and that's going to be my B. I'll figure out what that is in a minute. My C is my constant term. It's going to be 1202 times 0 0.345 times V with two ions per unit compound. The charges are the same plus 2, minus 2, 
and I need to figure out what that is. All right, so my b, let's see what that's going to be. It's going to be, and it's the negative of this, 1202 times 2 times 2 times negative 2, but those negatives are going to cancel, and so my b is going to be positive 9616. All right. My c is going to be, let's see, 1202, and it's going to be times 0.345 times, it's supposed to be times 2, times 2, times negative 2, and so this is going to be negative 3317.52. And so I'm going to plug this into a quadratic formula calculator. All right, so I'm going to plug these numbers in. So I pulled one up, negative 2911, that's my A. B, see back to paintbrush, is 9616. 9616, 9616, let's go to, this, this is negative 3317.52, negative 3317.52, I believe that's right, and now we're going to solve it, and these are my two values. All right, so let me write these down, 0.39, let's say 0 0.391, 0.391, and my other, and by the way, remember, since we're, since we solved for a D naught, this is going to be angstroms, and then my other one is going to be 2.92, actually, no, 2.91, excuse me, let's say 2.912, 2.912 angstroms. All right, here's the question for you. Let's actually go back to the problem. We're trying to estimate a thermodynamic radius, all right? Let's write down that equation. If I want to find d naught, that is approximately the radius of the cation, which by the way, in this case, the cation is calcium, plus the radius of, in this case, carbon, carbon C2. Now, what are they asking in the problem? Calculate the rate, thermochemical or thermodynamic radius of C2. So if I wanted to calculate that, d naught minus the radius of calcium is equal to the radius of C2. Now, if my d1, or d naught, excuse me, if my d naught was 0.391, I would be subtracting off 1.14, and I would get a negative value for this radius, which is impossible, which means that this is not a solution to this problem, meaning I'm going to use 2.912. All right, so that means I'm going to take the radiate, thermodynamic radius, 2.912, and now subtract the radius of calcium, 1.14. 1.14, and that's going to give me my radius of C2. So let's do that. 2.912 minus 1.14, and I get that this is about 1.772 angstroms, and that's my radius of the C2, all right? And you'll know which one is not a solution because one of them is always going to be smaller than the radius of, the, of, of one of the ions. So pretty much that means you're always going to use the bigger one. Okay? Now, in general, when you use either the Kapustinsky approximation to do this or you use the Born-Meyer equation, you're going to have the quadratic formula. It's doable. It's actually not that hard. I mean, you usually are going to want to have a quadratic formula calculator, but you can do it. The easiest way to do it is actually using the Born-Landa equation. And actually, that's what I want to do now. I know it actually wasn't part of this question, but I want to use the Born-Landa equation ultimately to calculate the thermodynamic radius. All right, let's do that. So now I'm going to find the, this is, where is it? Here's the Born-Landa equation. All right, now I want to ask you a question. Based on what we've learned so far, why did we have to use the Kapustinsky approximation to do this? Well, let's think about what the Kapustinsky approximation does not take into account. It does not take into account the lattice type. Remember, the lattice type is taken into account by the Born-Landa equation, this Madelung constant. It does not take into account the Born exponent, which can ultimately be a little more challenging to do when you have a polyatomic ion here. That's a lot harder conceptually to think about, and there can be some error there. And we don't know the lattice type, okay? 
So all those things considered, this is the equation we want to use. The only downside to it is, of course, we saw that you have to use the quadratic formula to figure out the thermodynamic radius. But one thing to really remember and just keep in your mind is that the thermodynamic radius is just in general equal to the radius of the cation plus the radius of the anion. Okay? And one of those is usually easy to know. We need to know one or the other. In this case, we knew calcium, and we just subtract this from the D naught that we calculated. All right. So hopefully this video made sense, gave you some intuition. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right. And that's about all we're going to do with this topic. And we might do some conceptual things in, the, in some future videos here. But this pretty much concludes our study of, of lattice structures. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.